What's up guys? We're here at the Johnny Jig shop and we're about to go on a long range trip today. I'm Johnny, we have Chris Doyle over here and we also have uh, Captain Ralph with us and uh, Captain Ralph is just kind of doing his rounds, getting ready for uh, this trip that we're going on to the Canaveral buoy, which is also called the other side, The other right? side, yep, the other side of the Gulf Stream, east side of the stream. East side of the stream, so you stopped at Big Dog Tackle and now you're stopped right yep. here to get some jigs and- That's right. And um, so then we're, we're headed to the boat. Then we're headed, yeah. We're off to the boat. Loading yeah. up the coolers and-, and Get out of here. Nice yeah, about three o'clock, we should be on our way. How long of a how long of a trip are we looking on to get there? The steam up there, it's 186 miles from Port Everglades to the Canaveral buoy. So somewhere between, probably depending on where sunrise is going to be, 140, 150 miles to where we start, and we're going to start fishing right there at the crack of dawn. Right. Uh, so we'll, and be then there. we'll work our way up to the buoy and work our way back, and you know, chasing birds and try to find them. Awesome. So a, lot of, a lot of water to cover. So we're looking for birds. Birds, yeah. We'll have the radars radar on. And, and, yep. Looking for birds. And, and so. then aside from yellowfin tuna, what kind of fish are we looking to Definitely get? expect to see some big mahis, um, blackfin tuna, skipjacks. And um, there's a guy who came to me the other day actually called me and said, just so you know, the guys are catching swordfish off there at nighttime already. Some of the long line boats. So. When I was in Big Dog, I grabbed a half a dozen big squids because we're definitely going to put a swordfish rod out at nighttime and see if we can't find one. That's exciting. So <laughs> Maybe even find one on a jig and we get lucky. And we were talking about that on the last trip. Maybe we get lucky and get yeah. one on a swordfish jig at night. We are pumped, man. We are pumped. So we, Same here. We feel, like we're, we feel like we're geared up properly for the trip, um, but this is a learning experience for us, you know, going out for big yellowfin tuna. That's not our, our normal, you know, fish that we're going after here in, in uh, Pompano Beach, as well as the long range trips we've done on the West Coast, stuff like that. So, so it's gonna be a learning experience. Kind of the same here for, for me as well and, and Captain Mike, because, you know, nobody's done this on the East Coast. I mean, you get up North, they do it, but nobody's done it out of South Florida. Right. So you get into, you know, chasing these fish in big center consoles. That's what I've always done. Now I'll chase them in a 130 foot long range boat. So. We're gonna You're we're gonna have to tweak this as we go, and how the boat birds are gonna move, how the fish are gonna move, and. It's right. gonna kind of be a learning experience for all of us. So you're pushing, so you're kind of pushing the limits from South Florida. You know, we're we're doing something new, yes, which is exciting, definitely. And I think I think we're gonna make it happen. It's gonna be yeah. successful. I hope so. so and this is, this is the first trip on the American Patriot targeting yellowfin. Yes. And you have more trips already scheduled. We in, do. Right? We've got them all the way into the end of May right now. So great. So, so there's a lot of people watching from what I've heard, a lot of people watching to see what this right. trip produces and then I think it's gonna be a wildfire yeah. We've, if we catch some fish. We, we catch some fish, you better watch those spots just book like that, well, we hope so you so. better hop on that if you wanna do this too. Yeah. Me gone out this liquor. I'm drinking Patron like he came in the picture. My stomach is tight like I did this some sit -ups. You know that I'm drunk by the way that I hiccup. The money come on in the clubs. I dig it up. I'm looking for somebody girlfriend to pick up. She came in with you, but ain't going home with you. And this is my part. This is my part. Bring to the show to the phone. Cause they're working to pay all their bills and go splurging. You hit up the mob before you hit the club and walk up in the bitch looking clean and detergent. I see you. No more alcohol to spray with some ice. We live so hard that we got it that twice. Knock us a whip with it right at the night. Shit, at least I had the time of my life. So we were just pumped for this trip and I really had I had one thing on my mind and now it's yellowfin tuna um, by whichever means necessary I really wanted to get a yellowfin tuna but my main goal was to get one on the slow pitch I went in the front of the cabin there in the booths are gonna sit down the guys are gonna introduce themselves and I'm gonna come down myself and give you a quick rundown of what I think is gonna happen this trip I've uh, done a lot of this kind of fishing in uh, big center consoles and um, nobody has done it in a big head boat so we're going to go and hopefully uh, do some damage and, and find some fish and have a real good weekend here but uh, I want to go over how I'd like to see things go and how we're going to work the rail, how we're going to work the trolling rods and uh, you know, make a, a real seamless uh, trip out of this. So. Alright guys, here's my bunk. That's gonna be my home for the next few days. We got Christopher Doyle here and Will here. They it was a long ride out. Um, we got some sleep at night. We ate some great food on the way out. And we arrived at the buoy uh, the next morning. And you can see it's got the, um, you know, all the gauges on it and stuff that, that measure wind speed and things like that. And that buoy is, you know, what, what transfers information to land to let people know, you know, what the weather is doing out there in that area. And 
we had the troll rods out, we were gonna troll if we weren't marking uh, tunas on the buoy, but we got out here to the buoy and the captains just said they were marking solid out here on the buoy, so these guys are hurrying up to rush these uh, trolling rods up top. We're gonna start chunking and see what happens. Okay, so I'm kicking off this trip with the, um, I got a 600 Valiant double in, uh, matched with the Johnny Jigs Pro Jigger Power 3, and then I have a 200 gram um, torpedo, um, watermelon torpedo on. And uh, also I have it uh, matched with the Gamagatsu 620s. I got a single hook on top, single hook on, my, on bottom uh, with 50 pound fluorocarbon going to 40 pound uh, Yozuri Super Braid. There was four or five guys that made the trip down from New York to be on this boat for this trip who are very experienced catching large tuna from a blue fin and big eyes, a long fin to, you know, large yellow fin. And Captain Ralph had those guys on, on the boat um, for, for experience and for taking uh, the American Patriot, you know, onto the other side, into the corner up around the Canaveral buoy. Um, to, to target, you know, the yellowfin tuna that migrate through these waters uh, throughout the spring. Um, so they've been jigging tuna, you know, in the Northeast for a long time. You know, people have been jigging tuna on the Pacific Coast and in Australia and New Zealand waters, you know, for a long time. I think the majority of that jigging is, is the, the, the vertical speed jigging. Um, idea of, of ripping a bottom weighted or just a, a small slender you know torpedo style jig up through the water column you know at a fast speed uh, inducing a chase and a strike. So we started trolling and making our way to the edge of the Bahamas. They call it the corner. And you know, we throw out these um, lures that the, that the um, boat provided. And a lot of them are tracking lures that will actually um, track to one side or the other. And they're labeled port and starboard um, for which side of the boat that you put the lures out on. And it was a, it was a very interesting setup. It was some, with a spreader bar and it was something new to me. I haven't seen those uh, spreader bars. You know, we, we've always used outriggers on, on the boats that, that I'm on, the center consoles and stuff like that. So, you know, we were able to actually put 10 rods out the back of the boat which is a lot of trolling lures going at one time and so we trolled through the night until we got to the corner of the bahamas as the sun started to go up you know we're all kind of keep an eye on the trolling rods to see if anything's happening and then two of the rods go off and they were screaming screaming going off and so chris goes up to you know the reel that we're on at that moment and starts to reel it in to get it out of the way of you know the two guys that are hooked up to to make sure that they can get their fish in without tangling up with us and as he's reeling in unfortunately i didn't get it on camera but as he's reeling in um his rod goes off yeah, baby. We started reeling this in to get it out of the way and something smacked it. Was that hard? Yeah. And we had cable on it because we were thinking we were going to get a Wahoo. 
Um, we haven't seen too many yellowfin, you know, in, in our years of fishing just because it's, it's, you know, not in our local waters. And Chris was just pounding on this fish, reeling them in, reeling them in, and, um, you know, it, it was his fish. Really, it was his fish. He, he hooked the fish. He got the fish, you know, I would say 80% of the way to the boat. And then he and I uh, switched over and I, I started taking the rod down the rail over to the side. And as I'm reeling, you know, and I start getting him close in, I'm, I'm thinking Wahoo the entire time. That's just where my mind goes because of my experiences. And when he says, we got a nice yellowfin, I was excited. And when I get pumped, I start screaming because I'm, I'm just, and that adrenaline's pumping and I want this stuff to happen. I don't know if John's gonna put this video footage in, but we got the yellow fin that hit our rod on, on, on the troll on deck. And almost as soon as that that fish hit the deck, John, you can see him in camera, just running towards the bow. And and he was heading up there to uh, drop a jig. I, I stayed to make sure the fish was tagged. And yes, I got a nice picture uh, with the fish and so did Will. But um, that's that school was active and around us and uh, there was also birds working you know around us too which which was just great to see because it meant we were in the area threw it out there and I'm jigging and I hook up and I'm like I'm like okay this is this is your chance to get a yellowfin tuna on the slow pitch outfit and I am just I'm stoked about this situation and what's going on and and I start reeling and I'm 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 super pumped the adrenaline's going and then boom it pops off and I mean it was it was heartbreak for me it was like uh, I, I just couldn't believe it got off because I knew it was. You know, I could feel the power of the this fish, and it was completely different from from a blackfin, and I was just, you know, totally broken. And I was like, you know what? Let me just do it again. Let me do it again. And I cast it out, and I'm on the rail. And let me tell you, I'm literally, I'm, you know, I got the reel in my hand, but I'm praying, and I'm like. Please, Lord, I don't ask for much, but just give me, give me one more shot, one more shot at this fish. Please give me one more shot at this fish, and this is what happened.
that was definitely one of those fishing moments that I'll never forget. Um, for me, it was a big accomplishment to, to land my first yellowfin tuna um, on the jig, as well as my first yellowfin tuna uh, ever. As you guys can see, um, yes, I did bite the heart. Um, it was pumping there in my hand and the adrenaline was pumping and everybody's like, you gotta do it, you gotta do it. And I didn't wanna be a poor sport. So, so I bit it, I chewed it for a second and it was disgusting and I didn't see any uh, way of swallowing it. So I, I spit it over the side. Something to think about from the time that I hooked up this fish to the time that this fish hit the deck, it was two and a half minutes and I actually backed off my drag substantially, probably a third from the strike position, a third back, just to make sure that I wasn't gonna pull any hooks or anything like that because I had that fish whooped pretty quickly. And you know, just, just, just a little nugget for you guys to noodle around a little bit. I'm really starting to get into the idea of what gear do you really need to catch the bigger ones? How big do you really need to go? And I do have an understanding, you know, just from talking to my friends in uh, Venice, Louisiana, you know, and my other friends over in California who have caught, you know, many, many big tunas in their life, you know, that, that some of them, you know, have the fight spirit and they just go and some of them, you know, come up rather easily. And um, I do fully understand that, but I, but I also have to take in perspective that it took two and a half minutes to bring this fish up and this was a 30 pound plus fish to come up. So, you know, had I gotten into a bigger fish with that um, drag set in the strike position, you know, how long would it take? So something to think about. Um, leave a comment down in the comment section below. You know, what, what light tackle have you caught, you know, large tunas on? And, you know, what is really the needed gear uh, for line and, and fluorocarbon hooks and things like that? We found fish, uh, we learned a lot. I always feel like when I walk on a, a boat to go on a long range trip uh, that uh, myself and probably anybody, any angler is able to walk off a better fisherman than when they walked on, which is a really cool thing. It's a new experience, you know, with your friends, both old and new. And, uh, and, and this trip was, was really a, a winner, you know, in, in my book for checking, you know, those marks that, that trips uh, have the, the knack and the ability uh, to do. So uh, hopefully we didn't go too hard on Will. We love Will so much, but we were having a little fun uh, with him. And uh, we're gonna end this video with a, a few uh, funny real blooper type clips. Uh, that that we were horsing around with the cameras and and will so hope you enjoy Yet another quite interesting behavioral pattern of the crane Lounging in a slumber yet shouting orders to his mates get away What can I do go drop down to 400 feet and see what's there? <laughs> And there you have it. Spectacular. <laughs> this is just so spectacular. If you place random cups of coffee in, in various places around the boat, the crane can be found picking them up and drinking them. Foraging. Foraging them. Observe. Hey, whose coffee is this? <laughs> <laughs> insight into the behavioral patterns of the crane. Oftentimes, throughout the day, he will lose count of the number of naps he is taking. But it also can be observed at the same time after awakening from one of these slumbers that he should be waking up. But he's not. I should be waking up, but I'm not. And there you have it. One of the eight wonders of the world, the crane. Uh, <laughs> From glory to glory, the crane has a knack for knowing his bowel movements.
means it'll be two for the day. He'll come around. <laughs>